we talked about Steve Allen, we talked about Parr. Uh, now talk about appearing on Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Well, I'd have to say that, um, and I think, hopefully I'm not alone, uh, whether I speak for fellow performers or, or the public, I think that Johnny brought an electricity to the Tonight Show that uh, nobody else has. Um, 30 years tells you something in itself. The great thing that I found, and again, I'm not speaking for other performers, actors or actors, singers, whatever, writers, that Johnny, the difference between Jay Leno or Letterman, Johnny would stick his face in the dressing room, my dressing room. John, what do you want to talk about tonight? And it was just this, my hand of God, I'm not kidding you for a minute. Well, I talk about when I was uh, born on a farm, first seven years, and then moved from Dayton to Springfield, born on a farm outside of Dayton, between Dayton and Bellbrook, Ohio. Well, he was born in Norfolk, Nebraska, so he said, hey, save it. Save it. We'll talk about it on the air. I know what to ask. Came through the curtain. We got with us tonight, Johnny Winters. Johnny, uh, Jonathan, you're from uh, Dayton, Ohio. Um, and I understand he was, we, we talked briefly here before we came on this evening, that you um, grew up on a farm. Your grandfather, uh, your dad took over the farm, and then he was on the sauce or something and sold it. Yeah, yeah, I was about seven, eight. And I remember the day that uh, dad was selling the farm. My grandfather didn't want to show because he was really P.O.'d with my dad, and um, so at any rate, uh, the guy sitting down was uh, fairly well-dressed, kind of a Robert Hall suit, and had some money on him, and uh, my dad was always saying to me, regardless of what the subject was, go out and play outside, hmm? Go out and play outside. I want to finish with this gentleman, and then come back inside, okay? So I went outside, and I came back in in about 20 minutes. I said, Dad, have you signed any papers? Well, what? So what? So what? There's about 250 acres. The cattle are dead. The cattle are dead, Mr. Bowen? Are the cattle dead? You might have tell me now. Tell me now. They're not dead. They're sleeping. What's the matter with you, son? They're not sleeping, Dad. They're dead. Well, okay. So they're dead. Are you sure? Oh, kid, kid, have you ever milked a dead cow? You know, you milk them like this. Yeah, they're already lying down. You don't milk them like this. You have a bucket you put down here, milk them like this. Well, you can imagine. I said, uh, what happens after? We're, we can't sell dead milk, can we? We're not going to get into that. Cattle have hoof and mouth disease. I, I just soon sell them if they're dead. Well, it's got to be a very long day, and uh, I had some other pleasant memories of living on the farm, but they weren't one of them. But um, anyway, we talked about a lot of things, a lot of uh, down-home kind of things, or rural, suburbia, you know, and uh, Johnny was easy to be with. He was a great listener, and uh, he, uh, needless to say, his association with uh, Ed McMahon, uh, Ed was a perfect fop, you know, second banana for him. But Johnny wasn't threatened. When you put that amount of years in and get that kind of money, then you're really truly at ease. Uh, I can't believe that he was never anything but that because of his time and, uh, and all that time on television. I think these other guys... Uh, and I'm only saying this, I don't want to bite the hand that feeds me, and have these guys ace me off their program forever, but it appears to me at times they're not so much interested in your movie, your play, your book. They're interested in one word, overnights. 